I'm, I'm tripping, right? There's no way that yeah. there's no way that's Ricky. And then I take a look. <laughs> it takes me a second, and I'm like looking in disbelief. I'm just like, no, bro, <laughs> you're right. That's him. Somehow like, I made it down there before y'all got before down there. Before we even got down there, I don't even know how that's even possible. <laughs> Yo guys, welcome back to the podcast. It is what it is. If you're watching on YouTube, click that subscribe button if you have not already. Folks, not gonna lie, you can probably look around if you're watching on YouTube. It's nighttime outside. We're filming this one late. This is, I think, our latest one together. This is a little late night, boys, episode because we just got back from the Florida Keys, if you can't see by the fits, boys. Come on up. It was, we had a little boys trip. It was me, Ricky, Mason, RTV, the Hutter himself, and then our boy Evan. And uh, we had a great time in the Keys. Some some crazy times in the Keys. Unforgettable or maybe unmemorable, depending on how you look at it, whose perspective you're looking from. Different perspectives. Different people had different experiences on this trip. And all I know is it was a good time. And speaking of good time, we're going to have a good time on this podcast. But also, in about one week from now, you guys are going to have an even better time because we have a new song dropping called Summertime. And uh, as you can see, we got the merch right here. I'm wearing it. It's Mason's wearing it. It's pretty, pretty clean. So much show in the back. I'll show them, show oh, the back. Let's show them the back at the same time, bro. We got two different ones right here. Oh, squat down a little bit, Ricky. You're out of frame. Like that? Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, this? yeah. <laughs> got it? What? This camera? Yep. This drop is another low, one right behind you. Drop it low. As you can see, it says summertime. And then right here, it says, ooh, we going to have a good time. And then it has a little, little palm tree on the back. All right. You can, you can sit back normal. Hope you guys like that little uh, promo, but that'll be dropping. Um, I think July 29th, the music video and song drops. So, guys. It's, uh, it's crazy because we literally made that in 24 hours. It was a 24-hour challenge with our boy DJ Fab. And uh, I think by the time this goes up, this Friday, that video of us making it will drop. And then the music video will drop the week after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you so, guys are the first ones to know. So yeah. The pre-save link will be in the top of this description, though. So everybody watching on YouTube, go to the description and click that pre-save link. It helps out. And, uh, and yeah, you folks. better pre-save it. If you don't pre-save it, then, bro. Take L, bro. If you don't pre-save that. Yeah, I don't know what L. you're doing, honestly. Honestly, bro. If you don't pre-save, bro, take that L. And, um, oh, yeah. Also, I got my cast off. Last time we were on here with the boys only, your boy had a cast on. But now I have cast off. Hands still slightly broken, doctor said. So, he said get a brace. But For real, bro. That was, like, the quickest I've ever seen someone get a cast on and get it off. It felt like it was on for a week. It was actually two don't they normally make you have a cast on for like six, like six weeks? Yeah, but or like I feel like they have, make you have it on for like did, two months. Did yeah. it even work? Because it was broken when he put it on, and he just said it's still broken. So what was the point of it? And I don't know. <laughs> I think the doctor should literally just tell you, "Yo, bruh, just drink more milk." That's what I do. I've been drinking more milk. But see, it was broken for a week before I even got the cast on. So it's like, you know, it's like it's like three weeks, so half the time. But it wasn't that messed up, so. Apparently, yeah, I don't know. It's so broken, so take it easy with it, I guess. He, he wanted to get the cast off so he could have a little sand in the keys, boy. Oh, that is true. I got the cast off right before we went to the keys because you can't get a cast wet, and we're going to the keys. Best believe you boys getting wet. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, we went to the beach, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. Right. Come on, bro. What you are were you there, talking man? about, bro? When we were in the keys, I thought we were going to go in, like, the water, like, a lot more. We, we, we really didn't. But we had a good time, I'll tell you that. Oh, we definitely had probably, like, the most fun I've ever had with my friends. Bro. All right, let, let's talk about the time we had then, okay, bro. Everyone I'll, wants to know about the time we had. Well, I wasn't sure because you're the main character in the story, but I'm going to have to be the one telling the story because the main character was on one that night. Let's you're, just say the main character doesn't really remember the story. Bro, if you guys have ever, like, played Pokemon Go, like, probably, like, a couple years ago, just put it this way, that me and Nick were literally playing Pokemon Go in real life. And Ricky was the Pokemon, and he was running around town like a Charizard. They were trying to catch me. We were literally <laughs> trying. And I couldn't be contained, bro. I started off as Charmeleon, and throughout the night, I was evolving. But he turned into, uh, what is it? A little Charizard. A P10, though. Oh, PSA. PSA 10. PSA 10 Charizard. Yeah, that's and then his, his special attack move was just like the tongue. It was just like... 
Okay, this isn't even making any sense for you guys, but let's run it back to the beginning. All right, so the beginning. The boys get there. We're having a good time. Our first day there, you know, we took it kind of easy. But the second day, oh, man, we were not taking it easy. We were there to have a good time, and that's exactly <laughs> what we had. Everyone was having a good time. Me, Mason, RTV, the Hutter himself, and our friend Evan, we were having a good time. But Ricky, I was having the best time of my life. <laughs> really? Was it? <laughs> All right, well, so, yeah, uh, let's say this. How did it start? It was Friday. We got there. We took it easy, chilled at the hotel pool, just kind of took it easy, went to bed, then got up early Saturday morning, and let's just say our friend Evan started the morning off with a little send. A little send. Him, RTV, started sending, you know, sending, got a little lit throughout the day. Yeah, as I might say, I was included in that too. I you think, were definitely yeah. you were you were in there too. You were definitely in there. We started off right at early at brunch, and and I and I was kind of chilling. Me and Nick were kind of, hey yeah. man, we we were just we were just we were being the chaperones. As you can see, we have our chaperone hats on right now. It looked like you were at summer camp. We were we were basically the summer camp leaders. They were the kids for the morning time. But then came the nighttime, and Ricky, buddy, he just had to get loose. Let's just say. How to, how to catch up to the boys. And Buddy got so loose that we all decided to go out to like a bar club, whatever. And it was literally called Rick's. Yeah. So, dude, it was like I owned it, basically. It, That's it was meant to be, and your picture is probably up on the wall now. Just oh, it's on the wall for a different reason For now. a don't come back sign. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm actually banned there for life. But we'll get there in a minute. But we'll get, we'll get yeah, into yeah. why yeah. he's banned. So, we're all sending, having a good time. And, uh... And then Ricky, he just, he got a little too loose, let's just say. But he was loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey. Yeah. <laughs> he, started, he, started, he started doing this move that it only happens when one hit Rick is feeling loose. The looser I get, the more the tongue comes out. So as the day evolved, it was just coming out like this, if you guys can see. It was like that, you know, just like in the lips. Then, like, maybe it gets like 9, 10 o'clock, it starts going, working its way down in the chin. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> and then by midnight, my friends, <laughs> tongue was down below the chin. I can't do it right now because I can literally only do it when I'm loosey-goosey. Give me my best shot right here, though. That's literally what he looked like in the club. Music bumping. and then I don't know why, but it just comes out. Bro. I just get like, hey, 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 you, hey. You you literally turned into like a full rock star. Like the tongue was out. Like you were going like <laughs> My it, hair was like moving going back and forth. This? Like it was probably like the funniest time I've ever seen you. Like- and it was just hilarious. You and were lit. The, the way Rohan described it the best was literally I tran you could come like Pokemon, bro. Yeah. I transformed from Charmander level one. Then I went to Charmeleon. Then I went to Charizard. Then I went to Charizard PSA ten. That's exactly how it went. And the tongue kept getting longer throughout the night. But literally, you did not care what was going on around you at all. Me, Ricky, and Mason and Evan, we were all just like almost kind of like chilling doing our own thing, and then you're just, like, at a table alone listening to the music with your tongue out like this. Bro, and then apparently, so I guess I'll tell the story, and then you guys can pick off when I... We'll fill in the holes. Yeah, fill in the holes, which is basically, I don't know much. After 1 a.m. I could tell the story like the back of my hand. Let me let me just tell what I remember, and then you guys pick it up, because oh, we'll what I remember will be very short. So, okay. uh, right. I remember, yes, I start getting Lucy, and then I remember I start dancing. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you started dancing and we're like, there's a dance floor and then there's like a downstairs to like this bar that we were at and like they have live music. But upstairs, Ricky started dancing and then everyone's in like a giant circle, right? Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, I think me and Evan were still kind of like having fun at this point. We were pretty, we were, we were pretty good. Lit. And uh, yeah, lit. I guess you could just keep it raw. You're at Charmeleon level. Yeah, you weren't we, Charmander, we're, but we you weren't, weren't Charizard. We weren't the PSA 10 yet, but yeah. one hit was getting there. And uh, Evan, like, gets down on the ground, and I hop up on his shoulders. And, bro, I just started dancing around. And just everyone's just dancing in the circle. In the middle of the circle. And I'm on his shoulders, like, bouncing around. And I just fall off. <laughs> and, bro, I literally, my, my, my cheeks are, like, bruised from it, bro. Evan could not hold you up. Yeah. And then also, in the <laughs> middle of the dance floor, there was also a little, um, little, little adult toy in the middle of the dance floor. I, I do remember someone was spinning it and whoever it landed on would have to go in the middle yeah. and dance. And, and it, I, did I, I think I, I went in there and hit some Michael Jackson moves, right? Yeah. Did I? I don't remember. I have a fire video of you, you so. both 
hitting like a fire Michael Jackson move. Oh too. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so clean. I do remember. See, it's coming back to me a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I'm reminded, I'm like, oh, I do remember that. So then after that, I believe Rohan decided to dip back home. You know, they call him Dad R T V now. He is a dad now. I mean, he has that beard and he he he's just a responsible man now. Yeah. And then it was just left to me, Mason, you, and Evan. And me, Evan, and Mason, we wanted to go explore Key West a little bit because we were at that bar, Rick's, for quite some time. Yeah. We tried to get you to leave with us, but you were not compliant. You wanted to be at Rick's, so we let you be at Rick's. But before we left you, I said, sir, you have to share your location on your phone with me just in case anything happens. You know, you're probably going to have your phone on you. We don't want to lose you. We, wanna, we want one hit Rick here. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So then I literally, I'm pretty sure I just took your phone and did it for you because I don't know if you knew how to do it yeah. or at the moment you didn't know how to do it. But then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then we, we, <laughs> we go to like, yeah. we just start walking <laughs> down the strip a little bit and just start exploring the town a little bit. And then eventually we end up making our way back to Rick's. And at this point, it's just me and Mason together. Evan called it a little early night, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's, like, like he's like right behind Rohan. He's like. Rohan's son. Like, Pretty you know much. what I mean? He's the oldest son. He's like the uncle. And like, the Rohan's uncle, like the, the grandpa. That's a way better way of explaining it. And then it. Evan's the uncle. And then basically at this point, we go back to Rick's after about like an hour, hour and a half maybe. I think it was like an hour. It was probably what time? Like midnight or a little bit later. Like maybe 1230. Yeah. And then, of course, who do we see at Rick's? We bump in. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we, we, we started downstairs. You. And we started downstairs and like we're just hanging out, me and Nick. And then, like, we walk upstairs, and then out of nowhere, we see one hit. Just wild, man. <laughs> On the dance floor, just like bro, this. I would know I was hitting some crazy moves, though, bro. Oh, you were hitting crazy moves, and you were also hitting people. You were just bouncing around, like, bouncing like a, like a pinball, in a, like, a, like a pinball machine, just bouncing around. You definitely bummed into some people. Oh. Now it's coming back. It was great, I remember. though. You look so happy. Bro, I know. I remember because I was hitting people, like, bouncing in when I was dancing, and they'd, they'd turn around and be, like, mad, but then I would just be like, hey, we lit, we lit, and then they, they would be like, dang, I can't be mad at this guy, bro. Yeah. So they would dap me back. Yeah, it, but everyone was lit in there, so it was like, you were having a good time, they were having a good time. I don't, You didn't ruin anyone's oh, night. Oh, we gonna have a good time. Definitely not. It was entertaining to, to watch and see I was and giving chase. people a free show, if anything. Yeah, it, was, it was a free show. It was but a free then, show. So tell them, tell them. Cause yeah, I, what then, happened after we saw Rick when we got back in there? Well, we saw Rick, and then you want me to tell the person that came up to us? Is that you're going to say? Um, and ask for something from us? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Who cares? Should I say that? You, do you yeah, remember yeah. that part? Oh, no. I'm not. This is like watching a movie that I watched like when I was a little kid. So as you're saying it, I'm like, oh, I remember, but I, I don't remember. So, me, so we're all together in Rick's like dancing around and then we're just like talking to you, Ricky. And then all of a sudden some uh, like mom walks up to me and Mason and you. She's like, do you guys have any Coke? <laughs> what? Oh, no, I wasn't talking about that. I didn't know you were going to say that. I don't remember this. What well, happened? No, that was like and then way I, I before. I said this. I that said, was way before. Wait, then what did you do? I said, I said, I have a little bit of sum right here. Get that neck. Ooh. And then I probably started slapping her neck. I'm just kidding. We'll never do that. <laughs> I thought you were talking about something else. What do you think I was talking about? I thought you were talking about the guy asking for the IDs. Oh, no, no. That's, that's later. That's later. Oh, okay. We're leaving that. Oh, we were at, at this point. This is where we were. We literally were in there for like 30 seconds. Or maybe like. All right, bro. Minutes. You guys are confusing me. Just right. get to the point, boys. Okay, yeah. so we're in there. That lady asked us for the stuff, whatever, and you're dancing around. You're just doing your own thing. We're just like watching you, making sure everything is under control. And then, you know, things got out of control. And it's me and Mason's responsibility to make sure that you get back safely and we have a good night and no one. <laughs> and no one ends up in the slammer, okay? Because uh, that was very close possibility. So we're like, yo, Ricks, we got to leave Ricks, okay? And you have to come with us. And you did not want to go. You're like, you're like, no, bro, I'm having a good time, bro. I don't want to leave. No, 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 I'm not leaving. Really? Dude, at this point, I was literally squeezing your hand so hard, trying not to let you run away. Literally, Mason was doing that, but you were like pulling away. So then I, I grabbed the back of your shirt like this. I grab it like this. And then you start you start walking away from me, and then your buttons like literally start. I hear them ripping the fabric, and your buttons are getting like ripped out of your shirt because I'm grabbing your shirt and you're walking the opposite way. So then I just hear, 
<laughs> buttons just, just popping off. And then after that, <clears throat> and then security saw us, and they're like, yo, you got you to control your mans right there. And I was like, sir, I'm trying. So then instead of grabbing your shirt, I just like reached down more. And I grab your skin under your shirt. <laughs> so now I'm just holding like your your skin, your extra skin on your like back. Right here? No, it was on your back, but I can't do it right now. Like I was just I'm holding your skin through your shirt and I'm like forcefully pulling you out. And then the uh, bouncer dude saw us and he's like, Yeah, you boys, you boys gotta go. You boys gotta go. Yeah. And, and at this point it's probably like maybe like one, one thirty. And I'm like, all right, I gotta get an Uber for us. Well, I, the Uber was actually for you only. Because me and Mason, we were still trying to, we were still out there having a good time, you know, keeping on. But you just wanted me to get back to the hotel. <clears throat> yeah, and we thought that you could just hop in the Uber and you'd be all good and dandy. So I ordered the Uber, and you did not want to go in the Uber. You were refusing at like the highest extent. You did not want to get in. So I, I literally pin you up against a brick wall. No way. And I'm like yelling in your face, bro. I'm like, bro, you have to get in the Uber right now. You got to get home, buddy. We're we're taking we're keeping it under control, but you have to get home. Me and Mason, we're gonna stay here. Mm, actually, Mason, you go with him. You go with him. So then Mason's like, "All right, I'll go with you, Ricky." But you still want to go in? So then I just smacked you in the face. No way, dude. He literally like I was like I was talking to some random guy, and he was just like sitting there with his wife. And basically, I was like, hey, man, like, do you think you could, like, come over here? Hey, man, and do you think you can come over to the hotel later, leave your wife? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. I'm kidding, was, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, no, I'm kidding. I, just told him, I had to say it, I had to say it. I, I just told him, just I, was, I was just like, dude, can you come over here and help our friend just get in, no, yeah. get in the Uber? Like, he's not, he's not listening to us. He's not complying. And so, <clears throat> at this point... <clears throat> I, th- I think the guy was just like, oh, bro, you just you just got to let him do what he wants to do. And I was, yeah. we, I looked at him, I was like, no, sir, can't let that happen. You were like, yo, he's got to get in the Uber. It's not going to end. The, the night's going to end with Rick's in jail probably if I don't get him in. Yeah, that's pretty sure what's going to happen because yeah. the cops are literally coming over because, like, I'm causing a scene, like, yelling at you. And then Mason's, like, talking to the guy. And then this is what Mason said. What, tell him how you he- heard that I smacked him. You're just talking to the guy, and then all of a sudden you Dude. just heard a... Dude, I heard like the loudest smack I've ever heard, and I, I thought you were knocked out cold. Bro. Wait, what did I do? Did I take it? Or did oh, I you l- took it oh, like dude. a chance. Did I just laugh? You ate yeah. it like you were a professional boxer. Let's go! That's why they call me one hit, baby. People hit me one time, and they realize they shouldn't hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how's your chin, though, honestly? Is it okay? Dude, I don't remember it. I, I don't remember that. You didn't? Okay. Well, Wow. <laughs> Okay. Dang, bro! I got a chin, like. Yeah, you gotta take, you gotta take it easy. Next I got time. a chin, bro. Oh, I thought you said you got to chill. Both, chill, probably both. So then, how? how so then, what? I, I smack smack. you in the face, and then we're we're just like, I, I don't know. Somehow we talk you into getting an Uber because you just walked into the Uber like by yourself. So you you go you get in from the right door, and you scoot to the left side, and then Mason's gonna get in the right side. So you're sitting in the Uber. Mason starts walking up to the Uber. And then as Mason gets like about a foot away, you open the door to the Uber and you just, you're gone. You're gone back on the main street in Key West. And where do you go? Right back to Rick's. I check- start running in there? Bro, I literally have your location on my phone and you, you're trying to get into Rick's, but they wouldn't let you. They would not let you bro, in. Bro, call me Houdini, bro. That's crazy because probably, like, I don't remember, but my mindset was probably like, all right, I'm not going to escape them because it's two of them and they have brute force and I'm not coherent right now. So I'm going to use my smarts, and I'm going to be like, yeah, I'll get in. Oh, you sick, boy. No, that's, ex- that's exactly what happened. To be that yeah. aware, though, <laughs> while I'm sent is crazy, you know? Yeah, but you, you, crazy. you did that, but then we ended, up, we ended up capturing you again and bringing you into the Uber. But this time, me and Mason came with you because we're like, bro, we, we just have to, we both had to be there. One, security, one security guard couldn't t- contain you, boy. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And also... The cops were there too when uh, we were trying to get you in the Uber because we we I asked them for help. I was like, "Can you help us get him in the Uber and get him home?" And then the cops were like, "Nah, man." Can't, can't. The cops down on the keys just don't give a crap, and they just know that everyone's just down there having a great time and just getting getting pretty lit. And so I asked the cop. I was I was just like, "Dude, can you come help our friend? He drank a little too much, and uh, can you just help him get into the Uber and listen to us?" And then at this point. Ricky takes off running again. <laughs> bro, 
I was like, bro, how is this happening? Like, we were just, I don't know how you were doing all of this. He's a runner. He's a track star. Literally, that song started playing, I'm pretty sure, in the club when you started running. I just started playing that. But then we end up, we end up actually capturing you, <laughs> literally capturing you and taking you in the Uber. And then we drive, take the Uber back home. And then we get to the hotel. Yep. We get to the hotel and we meet up with Rohan and Evan there and we're all in there. And then you say that you have to go to the bathroom and we're all kind of talking like we're all going to go to bed, but really me and Mason, we're going to go back out. Mm -hmm. But we were like saying we're going to bed. So then you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to bed too. And then hopefully you'd fall asleep, right? Yeah, probably. That's the idea. But somehow, like Houdini, this man had a mastermind plan to go in the bathroom, lock himself in the bathroom, which I didn't think anything of. I thought Buddy was just taking a little dump. And then literally, you're, he's in the bathroom for like three minutes. And then all of a sudden, you just hear the bathroom door rip open. Then you hear the front door rip open. They both close. And then all of a sudden, you're just, you're gone. You're running. You're running. And then we're like, yo, where did you go? Where did you go? And then we looked <laughs> we, we looked out of the balcony, bro. We yeah. looked out of the balcony. And then from our balcony, you can see like the staircase down to uh, like the parking garage area. Yeah. And we see Ricky just going down the stairs. And we're like, bro, where is this man going? <laughs> For real. You guys didn't even realize until I was walking down the stairs. Bro, we didn't think you were capable of such actions. That bro, it was literally like 2 a.m. at this how point. How aware was I, bro, to lock myself in the bathroom and to wait? For the order Uber to be there. You literally waited until the Uber was right outside so there didn't leave any time for you waiting downstairs for us to capture you while you're waiting for the Uber. Cause Ooh, I could escape jail if I wanted to probably, bro. But we didn't we didn't know you were no. going in an Uber though. Yeah. Cause we just see we just see we see you run down the stairs and me and Mason were like, All right, not again. So then me and Mason, we take a little shortcut and we go down a different set of stairs. And then we get down, we get down, but it was too late. We see a car, like, it was literally, <laughs> literally like a movie, bro. Because me and Mason, we get downstairs, and we look to our left, and then we just see a car drive off. And then we're like, there's there's no way, right? Because we didn't know you ordered an Uber at this time. We just thought you ran, and we're going to, I don't know where you were going to run, honestly. And we didn't know where you were going either. And yeah. So we just kept an eye on your location, and we kept seeing that it was driving Right back down to Rick. <laughs> right down to Rick. <laughs> we're like, bro, there is no way. <clears throat> so then by this time, me and Mason, we're, we just want to kind of pretty much go to bed at this point. We're, it's, we're late. We're tired. Catching all these Pokemon is hard. Yeah, it's hard. It was probably 2 a.m. at this point, 2.30. Yeah, 2.30. And then Mason, we get it. We hop in Mason's car, and Mason was – we go in Mason's car, and then we drive back down. Like, we have your location, so we know exactly where you are, but it's not – there's a bunch of people around, so it's kind of tough. So then we, we drive down there, and then – we end up finding you. So I hop out of the car. Mason's just like chilling in the middle of the road. And then I find you, capture you. We put you in the car. And we're like, yo, this time, this is this is the time. Because that's we've we already captured you like what, like two or three times pretty much. So then we put you in the car, lock the car so you can't escape. Put that child lock on. You're not going anywhere. And then Mason had a good idea to get you some food because food, that's just key. It helps. It just helps, you know? Help settle yeah. the boy down. And so we we got him McDonald's. He eats the McDonald's. We get back to the hotel. And um, basically, he's he's just sitting there eating. And we think he's just going to go to bed, right? Yeah. And so like, yo, then, this is the third time you guys got me, right? And he was talking like he was going to bed. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for bed, boys. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You guys got me. Yeah. Like, you're literally saying that stuff. Like, lying the whole time, though. Because, sure enough, yet again, somehow... You ordered another Uber. I don't even know. What? No, because me and... So, as he's, like, sitting there eating McDonald's... Wait, no! Me and no, you... No, no, Yeah, I messed, up, I messed up the story. I messed up the story. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We got to take it back. You didn't order an Uber yet. You didn't order an Uber yet. We thought... We thought... It was all our going to... <laughs> We thought I, that I you stuck. couldn't talk. Just so, so, <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, so wait. So I'm say, eating. I'm eating. Let me say. Let me say. It. I'm eating the chicken nuggets. Basically, lying to y'all straight up, knowing that I'm going out for another run. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. Oh, boys, y'all caught me. I'm done for. Dang, yeah. my time is up. Yeah. So then we we think that you're all good, and then me and Mason, we're only in the keys for a couple of days, so we're like, all right, might as well just go back out and just see see what's going on tonight. We already captured Ricky. He's gonna go to bed. Nothing to worry about. So me and Mason, we drive back down to that main street where Rick's is on. 
No and way. we're just driving down the street, and then all of a sudden, Mason rolls down his window and says, "Dude, I literally, I, I so we're driving with the windows down, just vibing, listening, to, listening to some Mike, and uh, I'm just driving, and I, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, wait, that guy looks exactly like Ricky. He's wearing white pants, black tee, so dripped out. And then it was like, there's no one else in the keys that's dripped that hard, right? Right? Probably. Yeah, that's yeah. what we were thinking. <laughs> but you're on the whoa. phone, and I did like a double take. I was like, wait, there's no way that's Ricky, and. Sure enough, Mason, somehow Mason looks over at me and he's like, "Yo, Nick, am I'm tripping, right? There's no way that yeah. there's no way that's Ricky." And then I take a look. <laughs> it takes me a second, and I'm like looking in disbelief. I'm just like, "No, bro, <laughs> you're right. That's him." Somehow like, I made it down yeah. there before y'all got before down there. Before we even got down there, I don't even know how that's even possible. <laughs> you beat us. We thought we left you in the room, and then we were just gonna drive back to Main Street. But little did we know, somehow you beat us to the Main Street. How is that even possible? I have I, no idea. I honestly don't know how that's possible. I'm, I'm Harry Houdini out here, bro. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I'm just amazed at how amazed great, at how fast you got down there before we got down there, and we left before you. Yeah, we left before you, and we didn't have to wait for. And an I was Uber. out on the street already on my phone, like being acting like I've been there for a minute, probably. Yeah. So then Mason tells me he's like, "Yo, Nick, you gotta hop out of the car. You gotta sneak up on him <laughs> because if you see me, you are gonna run." Because in your mind, you kept on saying that me and Mason were ruining the night. That's what you would keep on saying to us. I said that? <laughs> yes, bro. low key, Low key made it a, a, like an epic adventure, bro. Oh, it was definitely the highlight of the trip. Yeah, definitely not going to forget <laughs> it. But it was definitely like a little bit stressful at the time. Because we're like, bro, we just have to capture him to make sure nothing happens. Because, you know, you never oh, know. I'm like, a, I'm like, if I went to jail, I'd be that one guy that escapes like five times. But it was, it was shout so out to funny. me and Mason because you never went. True. But you probably would have, Loki. It was just so True. funny, though, because then we, we got you in the car. How did he get up? You snuck up on me? I snuck up on you. You're just, like, chilling at a... You weren't in You weren't in a bar or anything. He was leaning up against, like, a stoplight or, like, a pole or yeah, something. Yeah, a pole. And then I sneak up behind you, and I do the same thing. Just grab your shirt and grab your skin through your shirt. And I'm like, bro, you're coming with us. You're getting in the car again. <laughs> so then we put you in the car, and... um. But you kept on wanting to escape, but the doors were locked. And then I forget what happened after that. Um, we Because it's like 3 a.m. at this point, bro. Yeah. We've captured you like three, four times, bro. It's 3 a.m. And basically, this is where the story kind of ends. We got him in the car. And um, and one hicks run of escaping. You rolled down the window and you just kept yelling like random stuff at random people. <laughs> so random. I think one of the funniest things I heard is, what what'd you say about that shirt? What did he say? I don't, I don't know. I said, if, oh, I remember this. I remember this randomly. <laughs> I said, I pointed to a guy. He had like a fire shirt on. He was probably wearing the new summertime merch, honestly. But uh, what I said, no, he wasn't. Not yet because it's unreleased. But uh, he, he was like, I was like, I rolled down my window and it was like a fire shirt. So I was like, yo, if I had a dollar for every time I, that I saw you wear that shirt. I'd have a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So random, the stuff you were saying. And you started freestyling some random stuff. And then... I don't know why you said it, but all of a sudden you just said, like out of nowhere, you're just like, you said it just like this. Bebe. <laughs> and then me yeah. and Mason couldn't stop laughing. Really? You kept Probably saying like sentences and then you'd be like, you would literally be like, hey, bebe. Yeah, like, I think when I was like, walking. that's a nice shirt you got on, bebe. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was on the phone when I was walking. I missed Morgan so much. I called her. And then that was in my head. And then also you started literally doing <laughs> some sort of math equation in the back seat, just like hunched over, taking up the whole back seat. You just started <laughs> saying like, two plus three is four, six, <laughs> two, five. No, no. <laughs> uh, five, six. Yes, yes, yes. I probably figured out some crazy stuff, bro. Can you tell us what you figured out? I don't know what I figured out, but it was probably crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I was probably honestly plotting about like, all right, if I escape four times, then I can escape five. And that means... All I have to do it is seven more times. That'll be 12 escapes. But yeah, bro, that's just, that's pretty much, wow. uh, that's where the story ends. What a wild story. We took you back to the hotel, and then me and Mason are sleeping on both sides of you, and then you're in the middle. So if you try to escape, we would have known. Yeah. It was, was a big bed, by the way, too. It was a big bed, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to clarify. Yeah. I have we, to clarify. We weren't we sleeping had, on top of each other. We had some handcuffs, and he was handcuffed to the bed. Just put it that way. Whoa, boss. Well, that's. Not those kind of handcuffs. There was no handcuffs involved. 
But there was almost handcuffs involved because you almost got arrested. But shout out to me and Mason, bro. You got to give a big time shout out to y'all for keeping me safe. And I uh, got to give a big time shout out to myself <clears throat> for having an amazing story for this podcast. And then also, so the next day, uh, you're you're pretty tame. But then we also, we went to breakfast. And then I don't know what you were feeling. Maybe you were feeling some residual from the day before. I don't know if you want me to tell this. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Can I say it? <laughs> sure, you can say it. So we're all just chilling at breakfast. The story's just about one hit Rick and how lit he was on this vacation. Yeah. The five of us, we're all chilling at breakfast, having a good time. And then all of a sudden, one hit Rick steps back and... Um, I don't even step back. I think I just... You just scoot your chair back. Like just a, like a little bit. Like, like an a, inch. Like an inch, yeah. And then one hit Rick, he calls Morgan and you're talking to her and you're telling her how much you miss her. And then all of a sudden... Oh. Unprompted by anyone. I don't think Morgan even prompted it. I don't know what Morgan was saying, but I think you're the one who brought it up. You're just like, you started dirty talking to her. I think I was doing the same thing to at, my girlfriend. At the or, middle of breakfast, bro. You guys both were. Yeah. Whoa, wait, whoa. Did you just hear that? <clears throat> oh, man. I thought I heard something for a second, but maybe I'm hearing things. I think you're hearing things. Yeah, I think you're hearing things. We might have to, you might, you might hear that in the future, but, uh, what do you think you heard? You didn't hear, okay? All right. Well, I I won't. We can move on from both topics if we just move on right now. Yeah, just know we're both doing good. Just know that. Okay. Uh, you want to have your ten seconds of talk about updates on Mason Lamb, or should we skip it this episode? Yeah, we can do my ten seconds. How's your ten you seconds want. of update on Mason's Lamb's life and possibly love life if he wants to go that far in the ten seconds? Uh, all right. So I'll give you guys ten seconds. Basically, just know that one hit was always right. And if you just let things be, maybe like, one day you maybe will one see day it again. you'll see it again, and boom, and that is it. And I'm good. I'm happy, and let's go. Yeah, we'll talk about it on another one because I it, let's just say some things you just want to keep private. You know, some things are tender. Tender? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like a piece of meat. More like tender. Like you have to be. Care. You have to care and be <clears throat> tender. Yeah. And speaking of tender, speaking of tender, let, let, let's you. Th- you have to take it easy because the story is actually not done yet. I just remembered the second part of the story. What's it, the second part of the story? It continues to the next day. We're not going to go in full detail. But um, th- let's just say um, after you're dirty talking at the table, we leave breakfast and then we, we go back out to that main road at the Keys, which is like, it's like a bunch of shops during the day. Oh, time. bus. No, no, just trust me. This guy's a clown. No, and then we're, we're just all walking around. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, me, Mason... Evan and Rohan, we're all just walking around, and then all of a sudden, we start looking around, and we're like, yo, where is Rick? Look at this guy. Where is Rick? And then I have his location, and then we ended up meeting up with him like five, like probably like four hours later. I escaped again, boy. He was just chilling on the beach. I was like, bro, I thought I thought you were done yeah. after last night. What happened to no more running away? But he literally ran away I'm just an escape day. artist. You know, it's, I'm trying to see how many times I can escape. But we let you be, and it all worked out, you know? It all worked out. Everyone loves each other. Yeah. And after that, we went, tra- we went back home and came here. Yep, and now we're here. All in all, it was a great trip with the boys. Great it trip. It was a great trip. It was a good time. It was a good time. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Oh, everyone listening and watching this has no idea what that's even from. But uh, you will on <gasps> July 29th. July Watch. 29th. Man, that was a great story. That was, was super long. That was good. That was really long. Story but I, was I long know that too. was interesting. Let us know if you guys like the in-depth, full detailed stories. And uh, yeah, man, speaking of the in-depth, full detailed stories, let's talk about that one thing you wanted to say. Oh, that one thing I wanted to say. Was it that, uh, is it that one thing you're thinking of? The update about what's going down with the <clears throat> Jake Paul fight, bro. Oh, oh, oh. We got some, we got some boxing news updates. You it's know. like a little segment on that is what it is. Cause we like to keep you guys updated with things that are going on in the world right now, just cause you know, I like to hear it and you know, this is a little, we can just update you guys on what's going so on. We'll so t- we'll touch on the Huddy one real quick. And that is Austin McBroom is probably going to sell no tickets to his fight. That's all he needs to talk about right now. Mm-hmm. And apparently wait, <clears throat> so social gloves, they had a press conference the other day. With like Austin McBroom facing Gibb and all that, but it turns out that they didn't even invite Anisi and Gibb to the press conference because uh, Austin that- McBroom and Social Gloves were too busy talking about me and Nick, bro. <gasps> they were literally DMing us like they literally put out. He put out a statement saying Nick and Nick and Rick need to keep their mouth uh, like closed. They weren't even involved <laughs> with Social Gloves ever. 
And they were the ones DMing us, bro, asking us to be on the card. Yep. And like begging, basically begging Nick to be on the card. And then they were like, oh, if Nick can't be on it because he has his broken hand, we want Rick to be on it. And then they were like, you guys need to shut your mouth. And then we popped up the DMs. And they were the ones DMing us, bro. So, we, uh, yeah, we popped up the DMs just to show the proof. And um, sorry to leave boxing, but speaking of DMs, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but uh, Doja Cat is losing 205. Oh, wow. I blew that. I blew it. Yeah, it's okay. Give me a little second to recoup. Take a little breath, boss. Sorry. I know I know you're out of breath from running and trying to catch me all weekend. <laughs> All right, so what I was trying to say is, speaking of DMs, Doja Cat has lost 200,000 followers after exposing Noah Schnapp, a.k.a. Will Myers Byers from Stranger Things. But it's funny the way that this article is uh, read, is written. written it's funny that this man over here on the left <coughs> can't read. Bro, I'm exhausted from running around. Sorry, bro. sorry. And it's, it's late. So, but it's funny how they worded it because... Actually, the Noah Schnapp kid, Will Byers from Stranger Things, exposed Doja Cat's personal DMs. To him? Because Doja Cat DM'd the kid from Stranger Things saying, Noah, can you tell Joseph to hit me up? Well, no. Does he have a girlfriend? Blah, blah, blah. And then the kid from Stranger Things said, just slide into his DMs. Like, why are you sliding in mine? And, um... He screenshotted those DMs from Doja Cat and then put it on Instagram. And Wait, so Doja Cat was sliding <clears throat> into Stranger Things DMs? Yeah, he's only 18, but 18 <clears throat> is legal age. But she wasn't even trying to slide into his DMs more so. It was more so, let me slide into his DMs to slide into this person that he knows DMs. Which is another cast member of Stranger Things? Yes, but Doja Cat was pretty much cheesed that... He posted the private screenshots, and this is what she had to say on it. But the fact that this person, that Noah did that, like went and posted a private conversation between me and him is so unbelievably like socially unaware and whack. And like... You know what I mean? Like, that's, like, borderline snake shit. Like, that's, like, that's, like, weasel shit. And, like... All right, you guys get the point. Doja Cat is not too fond that Noah from Stranger Things posted the screenshots of her sliding into his DMs, and she was a little bit cheesed about that. But it actually turns out that she is the one losing followers, and he's going up. As the saying says, she broke. He up. Oh. City boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that's actually crazy, bro. What's your thoughts on that, though? My thoughts on that is, bro, why did she just slide in the one that she wanted DMs? Well, she couldn't She couldn't find his Instagram, was what she was saying. But he's a big thing on Stranger Things? The other guy? Or? Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, maybe her, his Instagram was like a different name, like not his real name. Well, I something. saw a picture of him. I could probably tell you. But what's but. your guys' thoughts on, on <laughs> the kid from Stranger Things screenshotting that and posting it? It's kind of petty. But how how old is, he's eighteen? He's eighteen. How, he's old 18. Is, how old is she? Like twenties, 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 probably. I mean, maybe the kid is just hyped up that Doja Cat is hitting him, hitting him up. Yeah. How did he post it? Did he post it and be like, "LOL, clown emoji," <laughs> like I, how we did Austin McBroom he's in there? Eighteen and childish, bro. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly because he ended. He he DM'd. He DM'd back and said he sent uh, the dude's Instagram that she was looking for because she said he doesn't have one. I don't think I can't. He doesn't have mm. a DM slide in, and then he sent. That guy's Instagram to her and said, right here, ma'am. And then he screenshot and posted it. But is the other guy of age, too? The other guy's older, I'm pretty sure. All right. Well, I don't really understand. I feel like stranger things have happened. Oh, I see what you did there. But it, it, what, the posting the screenshots, is who's in the wrong there? Uh, definitely the kid posting it. I wouldn't post it. But it's like, then again, why would you care so much? Yeah, I don't think it's too big it's of a deal. DM. Like it's posting, like, like, private I, I messages. I guess from her perspective. She's cheesy she posted private messages pretty much. That is because maybe she, <clears throat> from the outside, it seems like she's a little bit thirsty. Yeah. But I mean, but I mean, she's as a whole. Doja Cat. Have you heard her music, though? It's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. As a uh, whole, uh, as a whole, I, I feel like this isn't even a big deal. Okay. <laughs> either side, really. 
but sorry, it's it's just going on in the world right now, and I just had to bring it up. Definitely, Stranger Things have happened. I agree with that statement. Yeah, underrated pun. Thank you for all the people that left a comment and said thank you, Rick, for keeping it punny out here. <coughs> you um, you want to take it back to boxing real quick? Yes, I want to take it back quick. to boxing. And uh, something that I was right about last podcast, actually, or two podcasts ago, was uh, when we were talking about Jake Paul fighting Tommy Fury, I literally said, that's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Tommy just sounds like he he, he ain't about that action. They call him Tommy Fumbles for a reason. Because Tommy fumbled the bag. Twice. uh, He he, he ain't fighting Jake Paul, bro. Let's just be honest. He's not fighting him. Even his dad said he wasn't ready. He wasn't in shape. He wasn't training. His dad called him out. And so now Jake Paul is fighting... Hasim Rothman Jr. I, was, I don't honestly I don't know I don't really know his name. I, was, I don't know him. I was hyped for the Tommy Fury fight, but then they switched to this one and can't lie, I'm not nearly as hyped. I'm not as hyped, but after watching the press conference, I'm actually very hyped because Hasim Rothman Rockman Jr.'s dad is like an OG legend in the boxing scene, like up there with the hosses, bro. Yeah. So if you're if you watch like the press conference of the dude that is fighting Jake Paul now, the Hasim <laughs> guy or whatever. Apparently, it was, like, his old sparring partner, right? Yeah, yeah. Jake Paul sparred him, like, two years ago. And there's controversy about that. Like, they're saying, Hasim saying I, he only sparred him with one hand and still beat him. And Jake saying he beat him. But we'll see who beats who. Yeah, but then after the press conference is over, they, like, stand up. Oh, bro. And, dude, like, the size difference of Jake Paul and this guy, like, he looks like DK Metcalf. And if you guys don't know DK Metcalf, he's probably one of the scariest looking athletes in the NFL right now and he literally looks like he's a professional bodybuilder playing football. Dude, Jake won Jake Paul is literally six foot one, one ninety five. That's a big dude, bro. It's a big boy. And this guy, when he was standing next to Jake, looks like he's like six four, like two twenty five, bro. Yeah. He looks big. Dang. And he's twelve and one. So he has a better record than Tommy. And his dad's a legend. But the funniest thing at the press conference to me, bro, if you guys didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. It, it was hilarious, bro. Because it's Jake Paul on this side, and then it's Haseem Rockman and uh, Haseem Rockman Sr. His dad was sitting next to him, and they're talking back and forth, and Jake was, like, talking crap, and Haseem's kind of just chilling there. And a reporter raises his hand and asks the dad a question and says, why do you think Jake wanted to take this fight? Because Jake could fight anyone he wants, but he wants to fight a real boxer. But there's plenty of real boxers. This guy isn't really the biggest name. And his dad literally said, I think Jake wants to fight him because honestly, in all the other fights that my son's prepared for, he hasn't worked hard and he hasn't really prepared as good as he could have. Basically, he was roasting his son. He was basically saying- what? Yeah, his his dad was literally saying like, yeah, he doesn't live up to his potential and he's, he's never taken it fully serious. Like, he's wasting and, talent. Never yeah, wasting talent. He could be doing better. Even though he's 12-1, and one, he's just saying he hasn't really tried. And Jake was just like, bro, how are, you, how are, you, how are your own dad going to say that? So then Jake makes a bet on there and literally says, if you're confident, like Jake always says, bet like half a mil. And then uh, Rockman goes, I don't bet money. I don't bet money. Trying to, like, not play into the games. Yeah. So Jake goes, all right, don't bet money. If I lose, Jake Paul, I will change my handle to anything you want. I see Rockman, if you lose... You have to change your Instagram handle to I let my dad down. And then he was just kind of like, he was like, I don't bet money. And Jake was like, that's not money. That's an Instagram handle. Basically, I think Jake is very confident. I think Rockman's confident, but I just don't think that he's as confident as he thinks. And honestly, I'm going with Jake Paul, bro. Even though he's smaller, he has a worse record. I just think he's about, I just think he's, I just, I don't know. I believe in the mystic aura of Jake Paul right now. What do you think, Mace? Honest opinion, honest opinion. I want to know. Y'all know that I always go both ways because I love to, I love to see Jake continue the legacy, but in this one I'm gonna have to say I'm rooting for the underdog, bro, because I I love this guy, man. He came apparently he came from like five thousand followers and now Buddy has like two hundred fifty k, even though it doesn't really mean anything. Basically, just showing hey, that he's like and, a nobody. Me and one hit Rick. I mean, everybody starts at zero technically. Jake Paul started yeah. at five. He started at actually below. He actually started at zero. Yeah, but this is like a huge fight for the guy. So I'm like, yeah. shoot, I want this guy to win, and he's taking a lot of a lot of heat. Basically, so. if he loses, he he him and he's basically holding the guard down. He's holding the guard down for like real boxers because this is the first real boxer that he's boxing, bro. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if he beats him, bro, 
you got to put some respect, bro, because that guy's a hoss. It's respect, but still, it, it's definitely a big respect to Jake because this guy's listed as a, as a as a true boxer. But over a hundred amateur it's fights, not. Ooh. It's not like he's fighting like Canelo or bro. Some but you got to think, guy. bro. But yeah, no, Jake Conor Paul McGregor. is literally like some random guy that literally just started boxing a couple years ago, and now he's now he's fighting on making millions of dollars. So it's pretty crazy. Wait, yo, you said the guy that Jake's about to fight has over a hundred. Amateur, amateur fights. fights? 100 amateur fights. I did Jake not had, know that. 100 amateur fights Cause Jake and 13 like, professional. Jake has like t- like one amateur fight, and that was against Deji, which we're not even going to count that. One amateur fight and like five real fights, right? Yeah, so dang, I did not know that guy had that many amateur Dude, he, fights. Dude, and he comes from <clears throat> a boxing background. A boxing legend, bro. And for all the people that are like, oh, Jake Paul, he's not really about it. It's like, bro, Jake Paul literally had the craziest roast on Conor McGregor the other day. Bro, Jake is good with the roasts. That's what, he's, I feel like he gets in people's heads, and he almost wins before the fight even starts because yeah. he'll just cl- he's so good with the clapbacks. Like, what you just said, I didn't know that. He said, oh, I don't McGregor. bet money, and then he just, boom, claps yeah. him back with, all right? Because Jake's about that action, bro, and so far, he's, he's backed it up every time. Yeah. He literally clapped Conor McGregor's cheeks in the roast, and you know Conor McGregor is the king of trash talk. Connor was like talking crap to him and basically saying like you don't do anything. And then Con- and then Jake said, "In my fifth fight, I made fifteen million. In your fifth fight, you made like hundred fifty thousand or something." Yeah. And then he basically said, "Probably not my- even." Not no, even, no, 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 no. I think I messed that up. It was probably even less. I oh, he said he, this. He said, "In my fifth fight, you know." He said, "In your fifth fight, you fought in tw- in front of twenty people. In my fifth fight, I'm about to fight in front of." 20,000 at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. In your 18th fight, you made 150,000. In my third fight, I made 15 million. And then he was just like going crazy. He said, in the past in the past five years, I won five fights. You haven't won in the past five years because you haven't fought in the past five years. Dang. Look, I, I'd pay to see that fight. Jake what? Paul versus Conor McGregor, bro. Oh, dude. That would be, probably, it probably wouldn't even make it to the stage, bro. They'd be at the press conference and Jake Paul and Conor McGregor would probably fight right there. For real, they're both like the type of people who are just like, go, yeah. they're crazy, you know, almost bro, in that way. That would be the best press conference ever, bro. That press conference, I would buy tickets <laughs> to the press conference. Because they're both so good at just selling fights. Yeah, and that trash talk, which yeah. makes it entertaining. Like, you see a lot of the other fights, it's like, not that trash talk is like the, the whole thing. Like, obviously, you got to be a good fighter, but trash talk, it just gets you invested and you're like, oh, shoot, who's going to yeah. win? Yeah. I want to see this beef. Because then when they get in the ring, it's, it's, they actually have beef. That's why I like Jake Paul, just because he's so good at talking and talking smack, man. Yeah. Yeah, you love a nice, respectful fight, but at the same time. Which one would you rather see? It gets you entertained when they start talking some crap. Yeah. You think Haseem is going to pull out of the fight? Like no, Tommy? he's going to fight. He's going to fight, and he, he'll probably lose, I think. Speaking of pulling out, not what you're probably thinking of. Not what you're thinking of. I know what you're thinking of. what you're thinking of. We're talking about something else. Elon Musk. Apparently, apparently he doesn't pull out, but he has nine kids. I didn't know that. Elon Musk has nine kids. I did not know that until the other day. Doesn't he name his kids like super weird names, like R two D two and like yeah. weird names? I thought he had a C three PO. Probably weirder, weirder. It's like <laughs> you can't even pronounce it. Like like God or like something crazy. Bro. It's like X dot. I don't even know. It looks like a yeah. hieroglyph from the Egyptians. But uh, I, he was married to some uh, woman, and. Uh, I guess they're not married anymore because he just had a kid with one of his, someone that works for him. I forget what you call him. Not, well, an, not an assistant, but someone that works for him. But it's about that action, bro. But it's about that action. So, uh, yeah, but he has nine kids. He doesn't pull out. But what he does pull out of is the Twitter deal. Elon Musk pulls out of the Twitter deal. No way. After all that. <clears throat> After all that. It's $44 billion he was going to drop on Twitter. But then uh, turns out. He pulled out because there was a material breach of their agreements and had false misleading statements during negotiations. So pretty much his expectations for buying Twitter and like what the deal was, I'm pretty sure it had to do with the bots because he didn't want to buy yeah. Twitter if it had a bunch over, of fake followers. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, I just farted and coughed at the same time. No. But you I, couldn't hear it. No, I couldn't tell. You covered up nice. Probably because we have the headphones on, but I think I heard the vibrate. I felt the vibration. You probably did, honestly. I'm not going to lie. But I just had to point that out because it was the execution on that was phenomenal. But yeah, he pulls out of the deal. But then there's a follow up to that story because not only did he pull out of the deal, but now Twitter is suing Elon Musk 
for pulling out of the deal. How can you sue someone for pulling out of a deal? Because apparently, uh, uh, this is what they said. Bottom line for Twitter, Musk signed, uh, Musk signed on the dotted line so he should have to pony up, a.k.a. pay, and it's asking that the court force him to close the deal at the agreed-upon price of $44 billion. I just, I just think Twitter knows it's kind of going... It's, still, it's going down, and that's probably the biggest offer they're going to get. And uh, after all those bots get cleared out, they ain't going to get as big of an offer, so they're trying to secure that baggie. <clears throat> yeah, so that's that's been happening in the world. And then also, Trump and Elon Musk have been going back and forth on Twitter. I saw something. Trump said Trump said he th- could literally get Elon he, Musk on his knees. Yeah, he said, I could have you drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. That's what Elon. Uh, I mean, that's what Trump said talking about Elon Musk. So. Don't even know what that means. But why? Why are they going back and forth? I honestly don't really know. I don't know. I saw that though. Trump out of nowhere just said, "Get on your knees, Elon." Crazy. Yep, I'm not really sure what would happen. I think it has something to do that uh, Elon said he would have voted Republican if something, something. But honestly, no clue. Honestly, I don't really know. No clue. Honestly. Tell them where that accent's from. <laughs> guys, this <coughs> accent, if you guys didn't know, Despicable Me came out, the movie, and we filmed the prank on the main channel, uh, sneaking <laughs> in the movie theater, dressed as Gru. We literally had a long nose, the cape, the bald cap, everything. Nick was the minion underneath of me. And I practiced my Gru accent for so long, so hard to try and get it right <laughs> for y'all. And, uh, uh, just no. Ah, uh, no, it's so bad now. That's bad. You can practice in private <laughs> while I tell them what happened. <laughs> so today, we're filming the video... And a little part of the reason why I'm a little bit tired is, number one, it's late right now. We got back from uh, the Keys. That's exhausting. But then also, literally all day today, I'm carrying Ricky on my shoulders, literally running around in different movie theaters, trying to sneak in with him on my shoulders. And one hit Ricky's not late. He's 170 pounds. And yeah. your boy hasn't been really working out too much. So your boy's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah, bro. Literally after the, Dude, you after been- the first scene, bro. Bro. You have been working out your legs like crazy, chasing me, probably putting in miles, and then you did a heavy lifting today. He was literally lifting me up and down, and we made it into multiple movie theaters. Uh, or should I say, ah, we made it into multiple movie theaters because the plan is simple. We will sneak into the movie theater, and we will walk in without having to buy a ticket. It will be easy. Me, with you on your knees, doing what I please. <laughs> oi, oi, Trump? Talking to Elon Musk, buddy? Uh, it's just a fun little accent to pull out. You know, what do you want me to say? I'll say anything you want. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, Thanks. I like you, <laughs> brother. Oh, that was L, sir. All right, I got one, yeah, more, on, on. one, more, one more topic that's been going on in the world I don't know. There's not really too much to talk about it. Oh, I got something else to talk about, actually, besides wait. this. What are we waiting for? A crazy thing? Should we talk about how you wait, guys... Wait, are, what are you talking about, right? I'm just going to text it. Oh, he's texting. I texted to me. I'll read it. I don't know why we're texting. We're right here, but it's well, all good. Just because I thought you were, were, were going to talk, and then I was going to... Instead of cutting... Yeah, text me, text me, text me. Okay. And I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please, uh... Uh, well, 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 hello, everybody. Speaking of Despicable Me, I went to go watch the new movie, and uh, it it wasn't as good as it wasn't. Are as good you as the trying to disrespect me right in front of my own movie theater? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get pretty there. solid, bro. Come on, yo. Last one of the last updates for uh, this world news is I don't know if you guys are familiar, but. The James Webb Space Telescope, it got launched in, uh, like, March, I believe, or maybe it was January. I don't know. It got launched into space, and it's the most high-tech and expensive telescope that's ever been launched into space by anyone ever, as far as I know. It's, like, $10 billion. That telescope's $10 billion. Could, $10 billion? Could buy, like, a quarter of uh, Twitter for that. But, we uh, could steal the moon with 12 million. They sent it into space, and they just got back the first pictures from this telescope. And these pictures, they're crazy. Um, I don't know. If, there's not really much to talk about, but I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Space Let's is just crazy quick. to me. Yo, Elijah, I'll send you these pictures to pop up. But uh, take a look, folks. Well, it looks just like so unreal. It doesn't. That looks fake. 
Doesn't it look fake? Yeah, it doesn't look real. I can't. It doesn't look real to me. You see how there's like morphine around it? Some of it. That looks not real. It looks like an like iPhone see, wallpaper. You see how it's like warped, kinda. Yeah. yeah. It's because it's literally because you know how gravity like bends stuff, and like bends like space. I did not know that. Well, like gravity bends space. Like if you looked at space as like piece of paper, It'd it's like, like if you put like a ball on a piece of paper, it like set or like a like a blanket. It like it would sag it down. Like, gravity literally, like, sags space down. I don't know. It's so complicated. I'm not an expert in the field. But that's why, that's what they said, why it looks like there's morphine. Because these are, all these little things, these are galaxies. Like, with hundreds and thousands of stars in them. Those are pretty much, like, all galaxies. <clears throat> and apparently this picture, if you hold up a grain of sand. Can we pop that picture up? Yeah, we'll have, we this picture, it should be on screen right now. But uh, if you... If you held up a grain of sand, say you go to the beach, you hold up a grain of sand, right? Yeah. And you, you put that grain of sand, like, in front of your eye and hold it out like this. That is, all of this is in that grain of sand. You know, like, it, the, the amount of space that the gra grain of sand takes up in the space, like, in that way, is this is all in there. You're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> there's no way. Bro. Yes, bro. I thought space, I thought it was the opposite way around. Like, there's, space is way bigger. No, 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 no. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's what there's. That's what I'm saying. There's all this stuff, which looks. This looks like a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. But all of that could fit into a tiny grain of sand if you're holding it out, like in front of your eye. Oh, I get what you're saying because it's so far away. But that just that little tiny, that little tiny speck that you wouldn't even notice. Yeah. Contains so much. And stuff. if you put a bunch of grains <clears throat> of sand, they would all be like that. Well, yeah. There's wow. More, the, like, look at that, bro. Wow. This literally looks unreal. Dude. That's actually the insane. The pictures from his telescope are insane. Like, look at this. This is four galaxies colliding. Wow, that's actually crazy, Dude. bro. That's blowing my mind. But I think it's blowing Mason's mind so much that he, he look, he's looking like he has to go to bed over there. Yeah, no, I'm honestly like, guys, I'm so tired from in the keys. Like, we barely got any sleep because we had to chase one hit <laughs> around, like, every single night. But then you, it's just like, like, like it's, it. and then I went to the gym, like, right when we got back. So then it's just kind of all hitting me at the same time. And today I was like super grouchy when we were filming, so yeah. I'm sorry for that. And hey, also, it is what it is. Podcast. It is what it is. And also, we like Mason just said, and like I said, we were filming all day today. We were filming that the Groove video, sneaking in the movie theaters, and we've been filming with Mason a, a lot more. Yes, this is a big moment. Right and here. Uh, for anyone that's watching, y'all are real ones, and you guys will want to hear about this. Well, we just hired Mason officially to be a part of the team, not only on the podcast. <laughs> What is up with the burping over there, bud? It came up at a bad time. But uh, not... Uh, 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 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> but not only to be a part of the podcast, but also to be a part of the team for Ireland Boys Productions and Ireland Boys and just helping us make like more of a team. And make a team. Keep up the good energy and the vibes. And if you guys have been following us on all of our channels, Ireland Boys Productions, Ireland Boys, the vlog channel, the podcast... You know, we're, we've we been pre pretty consistent in the recent past couple weeks, bro. For real. Like, main channel video every week, podcast every week, vlog every week for the past couple weeks so far, so. Yeah, because in the past, like, what, like three or four months, like, we barely even posted on the vlog channel. Like, maybe, like, once, maybe twice a month. Maybe. 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 But now that we're with Mason, and since we're, like, paying him, whenever he comes, like, uh, over to help us, like, do stuff, it's like, all right, we're here. And he's here, and we're paying him. So it's like, all right, let's be as productive as we can. And it's, it was, the vibes have been good. It's been good. Yeah. It's been pretty good. Because it, it, it kind of, it's like a win-win. You're like, yeah, it motivates me because I want to just get everything done and just grind because you guys are paying me. But then it also motivates you guys because you guys are paying me. And you guys are spending money on me. So, so it's we like, can't waste the day So away. it's like, shoot, we can't just slube and just like run around and do nothing. Like we have to get after like it. Like if and, you come over, he's getting paid. So we're like, all right, well, let's get let's get them, make the most of this day. Are we gonna pay him to sit there on his phone and do nothing? Well, well some. Well, let's be honest. Sometimes in recent times, he's on his phone a little bit, but we're working on that. You know, hey, we are working on it. It, it gets better. It just takes time. But yeah. with us, it's like especially after the reaction. It's video all, it's we all made. it's all good vibes with all of us though, and I think it's a lot better. And um, it feels productive. Yeah, you know? I think. I think we all have in our own ways. We're all like kind of like ADD, ADHD. Like we're always thinking of a thousand million things at once. But then one of us out of nowhere will just be like, yo, like let's snap into it and let's grind and let's get stuff done. And just like 
and kind of just pick each other up whenever yeah. like someone's just not paying attention. And as long as one as the one person is lasered, then there will the other two. But then two of them will not be lasered. I won't be lasered. But then one person will. That's all that matters. Yep. And the vibes. The vibes is probably like the biggest thing. Just being around people that are like, yo, let's go. Let's get this done. Like, what can we do today? And Kind of just, just willing it into existence. Yeah. Like today, even. We had a little bit of the late start today. And, and even Mason was like, bro, I don't know if this video is going to turn out like the groove video, sneaking in the movie theater. And we were just like, most of the time, Mason's like, it's going to be amazing. But he was just off today. And we were like, bro, we just got to get it. And it turned out amazing. We, it turned out really good. It's already up right now, actually. It's already up, yeah. On the main channel. Sneaking in movie theater as Gru from Despicable Me. But uh, yeah, guys. So you're going to be seeing a lot more Mason. Let us know if you like him. If not, we can give him a little <laughs> snipperoo. I'm just kidding, bro. I'm just kidding, bro. You can't put that out there, bro. I'm just joking, bro. No matter what they say, you're going to be here, bro. I was talking about snipping your nuts off <laughs> so you can focus instead of being yeah, running yeah, around yeah, with yeah. all the ladies. I'm just joking, bro. All right. One lady and one lady only. That's all we're going to say. We're going to end it on that. No, we're not. No, we're not. Oh, we're not? Wait, how long have we been rolling for? for like an hour. We're at an hour? Yeah. Why, oh, you want to talk about a little more? Uh, man, how long were we really rolling? We can end it right there. Yeah. Snipping his nuts off. I just Everybody talk. loves the boys only, and no matter what, like, you got to know that, that this podcast is great, and people are going to love it no matter what. I will right, we'll save the rest for next time. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're working on trying to get Rohan TV. That guy's a busy man, okay? We're trying to get him. Okay? But we might be able to get him next week. Fingers crossed. We'll see. And until next time, RTV. <laughs>